Ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to be part of a, the team here that uh, brings ERAS and cardiac surgery to EX, and um, a number of different scientific societies that have jumped on board, STS, AATS, and I think it's something that has been uh, under the radar for too long. Now we're going to switch gears a little bit. This is a very practical presentation, and um, these are my scientific and financial disclosures. So this is an interoperative measure. We've seen it talk about different stuff. I mean, if we could have a giant syringe and inject it to the surgical patient and they, that would enhance recovery, it would be awesome. But most of it focuses on prevention of complication and this is what this talk is about. So we, we know until we can stop bleeding forever that all patients will require uh, chest drainage catheters after heart surgery. The question we have to ask with any device we use, is the device we're using efficient? Is it draining, and for a chest tube, is it draining adequately? We've all seen this, if you stick around your patients long enough, the day after surgery, conventional chest tubes clog. And the, the clogging rate is about 36%. And the interesting part is that when you look at where the chest tube is clogged, most of it is intrathoracic, so you actually cannot estimate it properly while you're uh, covering the patient. So chest tube rate occlusion is associated with more pericardial effusions, tamponade, pleural fusion, and also an increased incidence of AFib, and this was from a preliminary study at the Cleveland Clinic. So a bunch of surgeons put their heads together and try to look at these, this conundrum of complications that can be coined retained blood complications or retained blood syndrome. This is the combination or any combination of hemothoraces, pleural fusions that require intervention, tapping or, or chest tube drainage, tamponade, and uh, obviously um, pericardial effusion. I mean, these complications are going to have an impact on your patients, and all of us have some unless you don't look at them. Most of the people underestimate their rate of reintervention or TAPS, et cetera, et cetera. When you look at your data, most of you are going to find a rate of approximately 20%. It is also associated, these complications and or retained blood is also associated with an increased post-op AFib, which has been a big problem in our programs, and nothing yet has really made an impact on it. So this is a one of the first series that actually looked at the impact of retained blood, and this is 6,000 patients. You can see here, 19% uh, with retained blood, or any of the four complications I mentioned before, versus 81 that did not. And you can see that if you have retained blood, your hospital mortality goes five times up, acute renal failure is up, you're longer on the ventilator, and the odds of increased ICU uh, stay is elevated. You've seen this type of uh, 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 chart to evaluate the clinical recommendation and the group that came up with the consensus paper followed those and for a bunch of measures, I think 18 or 21, we looked to, quant to qualify the quality of the data to make recommendations for any of the, the topics chosen. So one of the things we looked at is a, a ancestral technique, I would say, but we've all done it if you're old enough chest tube stripping or milking. There is evidence in the literature, and this is a uh, structured best topic evidence review of four prospective randomized trials. This was published in Interactive in 2008, and it showed that there was no clinic proven clinical advantage of doing this, and it could actually damage tissue, and the conclusion was that this should not be recommended at all. So if you look at our chart again, this is a three, uh, class recommendation, so there's no benefit, and actually risk may outweigh benefits, and based on a level A, so very good quality evidence. Now, active clearance technology has been introduced uh, eight or nine years ago. It's, uh, it, it is based, the principle is of constant or manual clearing of the chest tube to maintain patency to avoid that 36% occlusion rate or clogging rate. It's been used on more than 35 patients worldwide. It is FDA approved, and it has a proven uh, safety profile. Uh, one of the first to uh, come up with uh, a study on this was uh, Professor Fishline, and you can see here that he compared historical controls, 1,800 patients plus to 
256 patients with the new uh, active clearance technology, and they showed first that they had a 30% post-op AFib baseline, which is the same as we do, but they showed that with active clearance, you had a 43% reduction in uh, retained blood complications and a reduction, 33%, in post-op AFib. Interestingly, on the other side of the Atlantic, this is our own data, pretty much the same design. Uh, we actually compared to historical controls, for 142 that we propensity matched to 158 with conventional drainage, and we showed the same, a 34% reduction in post-op AFib, and uh, this was significant in both the unmatched and the uh, borderline in the matched group. But interesting, two studies on different side of the Atlantic, same results. This is a subset of population that deserves special attention. This is a study from Simon Malte uh, that was at Vanderbilt and Mayo Clinic, uh, looking at LVAD patients that basically all have, at one point or another, any of the four complications we've mentioned. Uh, using a design where they looked at 77 baselines or normal drainage versus the active clearance, they showed a 65% reduction rate in re-exploration. Uh, also, a reduction for delayed sterile closure and a 40% reduction in retained blood complications. So these, type of, these patients definitely benefited from the active clearance. This is another uh, study, all comers, uh, that showed that if you do use active clearance, you will decrease your re-exploration re rate. And this may be, we can discuss that uh, a little bit later if you want, but most likely you can correct the coagulopathy. If you know your chest tubes are open, you will gain time and you will always optimize your drainage. By the way, a chest tube never stops bleeding. So this is the latest data we have. This is from a, a one of the, the hospitals in the Northern New England a group. Uh, this is um, a uh, 260 patients propensity match, all comers of 639, and you can see this spectacular uh, decrease in the retained blood composite. Uh, most of it was done over uh, a reduction in pleural effusion, re-exploration for bleeding, but also other uh, end organ complications as pneumonia, acute kidney injury, and uh, post-op AFib again, and post-op length of stay which amount to taking into account the investment, upfront investment for the chest tube, a saving of uh, 1,300 US dollars. The summary of peer-reviewed clinical studies when we did the consensus paper over the last year showed a number of retro retrospective studies that all went in the same direction. And this led us to establish a class one recommendation that um, Active clearance is recommended or is of value with level BNR non-randomized trial uh, evidence. Uh, and this is the way uh, we put in the paper. We actually at the Montreal Heart are completing within a week or two a 520 patient randomized trial and hopefully we'll be able to present it at the WATS uh, in the spring. So based on our analysis of the literature, uh, you can see that there's a class three recommendation for routine stripping of chest tubes and that a class one uh, evidence or recommendation that active maintenance of chest tube patency is effective at preventing uh, retained blood. And I just wanna, for the sake of balance, show you that there is evidence somewhere of other strategies such as posterior pericardiotomy that have been analyzed. In this case, 19 randomized trials for 3,425 patients that may have an impact. I don't know the penetration of this technique. Usually when I do a, a show of hands survey in a room like this, at, uh, I get no one uh, using this. But there is other evidence. And obviously the goal of our ERAS team is to keep track of the evidence out there to come up with guidelines. Also, perhaps to develop our own prospective randomized trial to uh, answer a lot of these questions that are still hanging uh, in the air. So in conclusion, uh, this, this approach, looking at chest tube patency, uh, should be part of any uh, ERAS program to try to prevent complications. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lou.
coming in. 